So as I said before, I'm Margot, I'm part of the admissions team. I'm going to, uh, before those uh, wonderful campus managers, our wonderful campus managers, talk to you about the cities you might be uh, living in in the few, next few years. Um, I know some of you on this call have uh, not applied to Forward College yet. You might not be super familiar with uh, who we are and what we offer. So I'm very going to uh, very briefly give you an overview of what we do and what we offer. So at Forward College, um, we offer six bachelors. They are all designed by the, uh, by the London School of Economics and King's College London uh, and awarded by the University of London. So we have uh, six bachelors, economics, economics and politics, business and management, uh, politics and international relations, data science, psychology, um, and uh, have I missed one? I think like I might have missed one economics and politics. Uh, so what does that mean to uh, have a program that is designed by LSE or King's College London? That means that uh, the curriculum is designed by them. The exams you will have at the end of the year are the LSE or King's College London exams. Uh, they will also be uh, examined by the LSE and King KCL uh, teachers and at the end of the three years you will be awarded a diploma from the University of London. That diploma is uh, very renowned so that will give you uh, access to top masters um, but also uh, any companies or organization you would want to uh, enter. This is a very prestigious accreditation. But Forward College is a bit different in the way we teach so that's the first big difference with KCL or LSE, is you won't be in a big amphitheater with 100 of students. We teach in small classes, on average 15 students per class. We have a lot of one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Uh, we have a lot of formative assessment that's to ensure you succeed in your exams. So we really talk about a very personalized approach to teaching. So that's one big difference. Um, the other difference as well is that on top of your academic degree at Forward College, we offer what we call our uh, business and leadership development program where you can choose entrepreneurship projects. So a social impact project in the first year, a digital project in the second year, and a consulting with companies in the third year. You can also choose to work on your uh, personal uh, development, so you can learn how to uh, manage stress, how to pitch yourself in an uh, interview, how to uh, uh, have a difficult conversation with your team, um, all of this. And the last big difference with LSE or King's College London is that, and that's why you're here today, the fact that at Forward College, you will spend your first year in Lisbon the second year in Paris and the third year in Berlin. And you will uh, learn uh, with a cohort, you will live and learn with a cohort that includes, um, on average at the moment, I think we have more than 30 different nationalities uh, on our campuses. And Eduardo, you can move to the next slide. Um, ah, we, yeah, that was the year one, year two, and year three. And now I'm going to hand over to our campus manager first, Eduardo, who's going to talk to you about what uh, life in Lisbon is going to look like for you. And uh, at the end of the session, you will have a Q&A so you can ask all your questions at the end of the session. All right. Thanks, Margot. Thank you very much. So my name is Eduardo Guerreiro. I'm the campus manager here in Lisbon. I'm Portuguese. And of course, to explain you what a campus manager does. Um, we are responsible for, your, for the student onboarding, and of course, all the continuous support throughout the year. So we will be your first, first point of contact, campus managers, when you need anything. So we, will, we are here to help you in everything we can. Uh, we organize student committees. Um, we oversee the student clubs. That's one of the things that we have at Forward is that students can uh, create their own student clubs, and I'm here to, to oversee that as well. Of course, throughout the year, we have also um, a good amount of events happening, starting with the induction weeks. We have two weeks of induction, two induction weeks uh, here in, in Lisbon uh, in September. Um, these induction weeks are very important for your integration, so 
in this induction weeks, you will have the chance to know everything about forward and of course, uh, a lot of fun activities as well. It's really fun and you will enjoy it. Um, other than that, of course, we are responsible for everything, everything that happens uh, on campus, um, facilities management, operations, everything. So for you students, the most important thing is just for you to know that we are your first point of contact when you need anything, you are the, we are the first person that you should reach out to. So now I'll pass the word to, to Catherine. Hi everybody, so I'm Catherine Ellis. I'm, a, I'm from the United States, which you can probably hear from the accent. I came to France long before pretty much so everybody here was born, but shh, don't tell anybody. So I know Paris and France quite well, and I can give you all the inside tips and tricks. Uh, and just, you know, exactly the same role as Eduardo in, in Portugal. I am in charge of all of the administrative side in Paris uh, and coordinating also with our partner, I guess you would say host company, which is the International City, University City in Paris. So I'll be able to tell you more about that shortly when we get to the Paris section. Spencer, anything to add? Hi, um, thanks Catherine. I'm also from the United States, originally moved around the world quite a bit before eventually ending up in Berlin. I've been in Germany for about 10 years now. It's my it's my home. So um, as as Eduardo and Catherine, I'm uh, overseeing the operations, uh, student life, and uh, the the overall show of of, uh, of our academics in, in Germany and, and keeping it running. So um, uh, that's our quick introduction. And now let's jump into uh, what each year was going to be like um, during your journey at Forward College. Thank you. So uh, let's start with Lisbon, of course, uh, where it all starts. And I think a good way to, to start this, uh, this presentation, which will be, will be very brief, but I think a, a good way to start is to show you a video that uh, where you, we show um, how, is your, how, how is the experience of students at Forward. They will, they will be the ones talking and I, of course it's, it's better to hear from them because they pass through this, this same experience. So I think it's a good way to start. Let's go. I think that the most important thing of living in three different countries is the culture that we gain. It kind of gives you this growth mindset. You learn to be very autonomous. I would say that one of the things that was scared off by moving to, into a new country was a loneliness. The best thing of living at UHub is that we are able to create community. After a long day, we just sit in the kitchen. We just have conversation about the most basic things, how people see that coming from another culture. Lisbon has been pretty awesome so far. It's way less expensive than other big student cities in Europe. It's also a beautiful place to study. It's always sunny and it's, you know, it just puts you in a good mood. I would say that I'm really prepared to, to see that in France as well. You enjoy it. So, why Lisbon? Uh, some reasons why you, you should uh, start this journey in at forward. Um, so, some of them the students from the video already mentioned, but I will mention some of them as well. So, in terms of safety, um, we are Portugal is one of the safest countries in the world according to the Global Peace Index. So, this has been happening in the last eight ten years. So, we are currently in seventh position. And uh, we already we have, have been in the third position some years as well. So, as you can see, it's a very safe country. Uh, of course, affordable living. It's one of the um, compared to some other European capitals. Um, it's a, a very uh, affordable city. Um, in terms of weather, probably you know this. We have um, mild, mild winters, warm, warm summers, and just a curiosity is that, for example, in terms of sun hours per year, we have a double as London. So we have around 2,800 and they have 1,400. So just a, a curiosity for you to know. Uh, central location, we are in, right in the middle of Portugal. So in the year you will be here, it's very easy for you to, to explore the whole country. 
like three hours from Porto in the north and two hours from Algarve in the south. So it's very, very fast to explore the, the whole country. Um, in Portugal, we are known for the warm hospitality. We usually well have this welcoming spirit where we receive people really well, and you, you will not be an exception. Um, it's very trendy. In the last, uh, I would say, 10 years, it became very trendy because of the reasons I mentioned. Warm hospitality, the weather, the safety, all of that. And, uh, and also, it's an innovation hub. So many, many events. Uh, it's it's a, a startup. It has a startup ecosystem. And some of the major, uh, the biggest uh, tech events, such as, for example, the, the Web Summit, the biggest one um, happens here in Portugal in November. So it's a good opportunity also for you to, to observe knowledge in these events and also to, to do some network and to know people that can open doors for you in the future. Uh, more things, of course, beaches. We have um, in 15, 20 minutes, uh, you can go to, to beautiful beaches. And fortunately, throughout the year, we have, uh, I would say, five to six months where you can go to the beach, which is really amazing. We have a beautiful architecture. Um, it's very traditional, but in the last few years, it became also some, we have some modern museums and all of that, that, that give a good combination between traditional and modern and quality of life. Also because of the reasons I mentioned, we have a lot of parks, we have the river, a lot of places, a lot of events going on that you can uh, attend. Uh, which make it a, a great city to live uh, in this first year. Let's go for the campus facilities now, just for you to know um, a bit about uh, what can we offer about in terms of facilities. Um, the map. So here in the bottom pin, you can see uh, it's our Flores Learning Center, where you have where you will have some of the classes. I, I would say most of them. Uh, it's right in the city center of, of Lisbon, in the heart of Lisbon. We have the Pink Palace, which is inside the British Council. We have a partnership with the British Council and inside the British Council, we have some classrooms and many of your classes will be there as well. Since we have a partnership, um, since we are accredited, recognized by the University of London, we did this partnership with the British Council and we have a great relationship with them. This is between the two learning centers. It's like 10, 15 minutes walking distance. So it's very, very close one from each other. From one another. Uh, the student residence in the blue pin, it's uh, here we have we are two minutes walking distance from the metro and then you just need to do a 20 minutes ride until the, um, the student residence and the, our co-working space which is in the same building as the, the student residence which is a place a great place a co-working space exclusive for our students. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a view, the view from the Learning Center, Flores. Uh, I will show you some photos of uh, how it's inside. So this is a workroom. Uh, it's very traditional, but we try to do the, this combination between traditional and modern. Um, classrooms, as, as, uh, as we mentioned, we, are, we have small uh, room uh, because our classes, our, the, the size of our um, Classes are, are really maximum or an average 15 students. So the classes are, are at this cozy feeling. Um, we have also a terrace with a ping pong table. We have a lot of sun in Lisbon, so you can enjoy the sun, some sun during your breaks. Uh, this is the kitchen. Students use it a lot as well. They, they bring their own food. They get along, they, they talk. It's a, a, a great... Uh, way place to, to to be here uh, we have also uh, fruits uh, coffee uh, teas all free for you just you can feel more at home uh, this is our meditation room it's very popular among our students uh, it's a place where you can just sit and relax read or even take a like a power nap 15 20 minutes in between classes and students use it a lot it's quite popular um, here is the Pink Palace. It has a, a great garden. Uh, students use it a lot. Actually, this, uh, this is some of our students using it. 
And also, I know that some teachers, when, when the weather uh, allows, they just go outside and lecture in, in the garden, which is also amazing. This is just a photo of one of the classrooms. Then we have the student residence. Uh, as I told you, 20 minutes from, from here. It has great facilities, very modern. This is one of the rooms. Uh, another photo from the rooms. As you can see, it's really comfortable. Then the kitchens, these are shared kitchens. I believe it's uh, one kitchen for every eight students. Um, great, great uh, tool, great uh, oven. It, it has everything, basically, and it's very modern. Uh, it's also a good way for you to, to meet other people, to get along with your colleagues, to, to, to build this relationship with them. And also with other students from other universities that are also at the student residence. The, the co-working space that I mentioned, it's right, it's in the same building of the student residence, but this one is exclusive for, uh, for college students. We have events here, but usually it's used by the students to study, to do, uh, to do groups, uh, to do work groups, uh, to, to discuss, uh, to prepare classes, all of that. Uh, here, it's just for you to have an idea of the cost of living in Portugal. As I told you, it's uh, very affordable com comparing to other capitals or big, big cities in, in Europe. Just out of an example, for example, the student room at Shior, the residence, it's 640 uh, euros with all the conditions. And for example, also the public transportation pa pass, which is quite, it's quite cheap, it's 30 euros and you can go you can ride bus, metro, trains, uh, boats, uh, pretty much everything. So 30 euros, I think it's a very good price to, to enjoy and, and take this opportunity. Uh, grocery, I would say around, yeah, 200 euros uh, per month. It's enough for you to, to grab some, some food and to survive. <laughs> um, to finalize, uh, some photos of our students in Lisbon. I think five of them are during induction week. As I told you, induction week is really important for you to, to integrate uh, in life in Lisbon, life at forward. So we do all kinds of activities. Uh, you will know everything about forward college in these two weeks, but they are a lot, they have a, a, they are a lot of fun as well. So there are a lot of fun activities. In the first photo, you can see, for example, the last day of induction, usually we go to the beach, we have a surf lesson, we have yoga, so it's, it's really nice, students loved it this year and last year as well. Um, and for example, in the, at the bottom, bottom left, uh, we have um, a, a walking tour um, around Lisbon for you to know the, the, the old part of Lisbon. And it was really nice too. We don't have a, a photo about the cooking contest, but it's also quite, quite popular. Um, so basically in the first, during induction, uh, students, uh, they do groups and each group cooks uh, for a jury. I was jury uh, last year. I intend to continue to be because the food was really amazing. <laughs> and it's really, really fun to wait to start to. Uh, here on the bottom right, um, it, this is one of the, the classes of uh, politics and international relations where the students, they, they went to um, a Roman, Roman theater here in Lisbon with, with uh, Rory, which is the head of PIR. Okay, and that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed. It was really brief, but we need to have time for you to ask all the questions at the end. Um, and feel free to reach out uh, if you need. And hopefully I can see you in Lisbon next year. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Edward. All right, so now we move from the sea, the sun, the beaches and the hills that will make any kind of a gym membership person jealous of the free workout that you've gotten in Lisbon. You'll head north, up along, go over the Pyrenees, keep going north through the Champagne region and all of the vineyards and land in the most beautiful city in the world. Proven fact, you cannot deny it. Um, you've got, you know, the thank you, Hosmanian, for making all of the buildings gorgeous and getting rid of all the old stuff 
a couple of hundred years ago. Uh, very, very gorgeous city. It's um, like I said, I've been here for a very long time. And when I first arrived, one of my favorite activities was to use my my bus pass and I would just get on a bus and sit and stare out the window until I saw something interesting, get off, wander around the neighborhood until I got tired of it and then find the closest metro station because there's never more than like a five, 10 minute walk to any metro station and then find my way home like that. So Paris is a great city, um, culturally extremely rich. There is always every single day of the year, always lots of activities going on. Um, you also have a huge number of benefits and discounts for being a student. So I would say take advantage of it while you're young, um, take out a loan and go to all those museums, even though they all have a free Sunday somewhere or a Thursday evening, but lots and lots of activities to do. So looking at the big picture of Paris, I wanna show you where we're located. Next slide, Eduardo, yeah. So here you see all of Paris. You can kind of see the circle, a yellow circle going around Paris here. Um, and we're in the red circle towards the bottom there. So the Southern part of Paris, it only takes about 10, 15 minutes to get up to the um, to um, Notre Dame area. So right in the middle of Paris, it's maybe 20 minutes to Eiffel Tower, et cetera. So Paris is actually quite small and concentrated, but it is a much bigger city and higher population than Lisbon. And if you zoom in on where we're at, you'll see there's a lot of green parks. We are actually on a big public park as well across the street. So just to the north of the, the pinpoint here, you'll see there's also Parc Montsouris. A uh, little anecdote there, they have a water distribution. Paris has free water everywhere. Um, and this particular distributing center, I don't know if that's the correct word. Sorry, my French kind of interferes with my English anymore. But this one, you can get normal water, but you can also get sparkling water. So that's, you know, the luxury of Paris. Um, so we are located on a campus that is in, actually it was, yeah, so the City Internationale Universitaire de Paris. So CIUP. Um, actually, I think the next slide has a video and it's probably the best way to give you the overall view. I think a lot of it was the same cohort. So you'll see them growing from Lisbon into Paris. Let's go ahead and watch it and then I'll add some more things to that. The Paris campus is called the Cité Internationale Universitaire de Paris and it's in the very south at the border of Paris. It's a very big campus with an international house in the middle with 43 different houses from different countries around it. It houses 12,000 residents. All of the second year students are living here. Life here on campus really differs so much from the Lisbon one. It was good in different ways. Lisbon, you had so much nature around you. I mean, you could go to the beach in 30 minutes, which was wonderful. Here in Paris, it's kind of a different culture, a different vibe. On campus, there are so many international students, so you get to meet people new, like, every day. There are so many facilities and opportunities to meet others um, and also do, like, fun activities with them or kind of develop yourself more, too. There are so many events here, like, concerts or art galleries. It's inspiring myself to like push myself and work on other goals and other projects too. Paris is really my favorite until now, I think. Nicholas and Sofia, one-on-one. -on -one. For me, the Paris campus is unique in terms of the amount of sport offers. I play tennis, I do soccer, and I also tried out swimming, and there's many more things that I'm going to try out in the future as well. I've been playing the violin since the age of seven, so it's a really big passion of mine and I brought my violin with here to the Paris campus where I joined the orchestra of the Collège Néerlandais. We meet twice a week to rehearse and it's really nice to share your passion with other students as well. We are um, shielded from the vastness of Paris because if we don't want to go, we don't have to because we can absolutely live within the campus, but we also have the opportunity to take a, the metro and be in the center in 15 minutes. I think it's a very convenient way of doing it. My best memories in Paris was actually arriving here, seeing everyone again after the summer, exploring the city for the first time without having any studies to do yet, and just doing some sightseeing together. All right. So it's actually kind of hard to add anything more to that. Um, back a slide. Um, I'll give you a little bit of perspective and like background on our partnership. So CIUP was 
It was launched after World War I with the concept of bringing people from around the world into one place in order to study and live and grow together and to better understand different cultures, um, different communities, and really learn to live all together. So there's 43 different houses. Houses you can kind of think of as like a dorm. Um, so right behind me, this one is the, the main house. This is where we have our all of our classrooms and also the office that I'm in right now. Uh, and also some students live right here on this floor here. So it is a, a mix of everything, but there's 43 different houses and each house is run by a different association or a different country. And most of them are linked to a specific country. Many of them are actually owned by that given country. So for example, um, across the way we have the Argentina house and a lot of the, the staff working there, they speak Spanish and very little French or English. So it's really very interesting cultural kind of background. Um, lots of great green spaces as well. You'll meet lots of people. We're very, very lucky to have this partnership. Our students are actually the only undergraduate students that live here. Otherwise, it's reserved just for graduate, um, so master's, doctorate, uh, and artists. And those are the only other students that live around here of the 12,000 students. So we're very lucky to be able to be here. Um, and there's lots of events going on, such as, next slide. Uh, so you've got a lot of activities that you can participate in directly, or you can just go and enjoy the different events. There's a theater that's in the same building right here behind me. It's on this side, uh, open to the general public. So everybody can go. I could come and take my kids to go and see a, a circus show next week if I want to. There's a choir if you want to try out for that. Um, contemporary arts. We've got an art uh, exposition that is downstairs next to one of our our classrooms, uh, swimming pool, so great sports facilities. I think we have a few more pictures of the sports facilities afterwards uh, that we also saw in the video, if you want to go through. So the big swimming pool, uh, right, that's in this building down here. Uh, gymnasium that's in another building back there. Uh, so you can go and play badminton, volleyball, just be careful. One of our students sprung his ankle a couple of weeks ago playing volleyball, but there's insurance. Uh, France has excellent health insurance that all students have the legal right to have. So nobody has an excuse, you've got yourself covered. Now, all of this is great, but you're actually here to study, right? That's the main point. Don't tell the parents, but they consider the main point to be studying, even though we know that you like all this other stuff. So there is lots of study space and I wanna show you our classrooms. This is the library that is right over here behind me. Um, this is one of our classrooms. So like in Lisbon, we have, all of our classrooms have kind of the more serious desk space, but we also have kind of a cozy corner. This room here is the student lounge area. It's kind of what you would call the equivalent to the meditation room. This is purely for student use. There's no classes in here. It's And this picture was obviously taken just before the winter break. It looks slightly different now. Uh, so this space for students to relax uh, in between classes or during the study periods as well. Uh, also doing some group work. This one is one at Clarkson, one of our classrooms as well. And actually I, listening to you, Eduardo, it reminded me the students came to me last week and they said, you know, we really, really appreciated the meditation room and having that silent space. So we've decided that during the revision periods before the end of your exams and during end of your exams, Clarkson is going to be converted into a meditation room um, just to go for silent study or relaxation, whatever you need, but no noise. So we've got our own meditation space. Um, here is another angle from one of our classrooms. So you can see that similar to, to Lisbon, we've got tables that can be moved around, modify the classroom to fit the different activities that are going to be done. Um, and obviously, you know, screens for presentations if needed. Uh, as far as where you're gonna be living. So this is one of the residences our students live in currently. The next screen you'll see all the different buildings that our students are currently in. Obviously, this with 43 different houses, this will probably change in the future. We might keep some of these, they might change. Um, so this is not contractual, but this year, right now, this is where our, our students are all living are in these different houses. So Cambodge, Garrick, Honora, and Dubier. And Dubier is the house that has studio apartments. So the students are in their own room with a little kitchenette set and their own shower and, and toilet. Whereas Honora and Garrick, they're in single rooms with a sink, but they have shared bathrooms and a shared kitchen. 
And Cambodge is a little bit hybrid. It's a room, private room with a private bathroom, but they have a shared kitchen. So on the next slide, you can see some pictures of these spaces. So you've got um, the bedroom in Onora there. Also, all of the houses have a common area. Uh, and each house has its own vibe, its own personality, because they're all owned by different countries. So they tend to pick up on that, that different cultural aspect within the different buildings. Uh, I want to say that the bottom center picture is kind of messed up because of the angles. It's not that skinny. Trust me, it's, it's, it's actually much wider than what it feels like here. You definitely, you could get by with a, a, a walker if you're a really old person. So um, they're more spacious than it feels like here. But you also have, you know, relaxation, uh, foosball table, ping pong table, etc. cetera. Uh, cost of living, as Eduardo said, it may be really cheap to live in Lisbon. It is the opposite in Paris. So you do need to budget much higher for the Paris year than you will for, I believe, both of the, the other campuses, primarily due to the cost of housing in Paris. Um, it's highly competitive just not enough housing. You can stay with us. Some students prefer to live in their own places in Paris, but I think 95% of our students stay on at CIUP. Um, also public transportation, some students have it, other students have opted for the, the bike sharing option. Since there aren't hills like this in Paris, it's more like this. Biking can be a good option as well. And finally, the same family happy joyful moment photos, uh, primarily of the students' arrivals. So we have, you know, the, the, the family picture on the top left. Um, we tend to do a boat tour as well along the River Seine, so you can see the different parts of Paris from the river. Um, we've traditionally and probably will continue our, our Welcome to Paris Patank competition. Um, and, a, and a visit to the different parts of Paris. And then on the bottom right is actually the Chateau de Versailles, where we go to a big event at the end of the induction week um, and watch some fireworks and some water fountain shows, et cetera. So good thing. It's a nice mix between fun activities and studies and having comfortable study space for students. Hand it over to you, Spencer. Great, thank you, Catherine. So to recap a little bit, so in year one in Lisbon, um, I mean, you're in this beautiful city on the beach with, uh, in a campus that's uh, quite cozy and familiar uh, with the student residents where everybody lives together. In year two in Paris, you branch out a little bit more. You're in this part of this university environment um, with a few different housing options, but still in a fairly close community. When you come to Berlin, it's going to change quite a lot once again. So. Um, we go to the next slide. So welcome to Berlin. Um, why Berlin? I, there could be hundreds of reasons for why Berlin. I decided to open this question up to my students and this was the list they came back to, to me with. Um, in the interest of time, I'll just point out a two, I'll point out three key ones for me. Um, one, the green city. Um, Berlin is very large. Um, it's a sprawling city, but everywhere you go, you'll find green space. And within very quick access on public transport, you can get to um, very broad forests and lakes that you can swim in in the summer. Uh, so it's a very nature oriented city. Um, I would also point out the startup hub. Um, ah, Johanna just joined. Hi, Johanna. She is a, uh, one of our uh, third year students uh, here in, Bris in Berlin at the moment. Um, she'll be joining us for the Q&A in a moment. Happy you're with us. Um, the last point on the list, I'd also like to point out the city of foodies. Uh, the restaurant scene in Berlin is absolutely incredible. You don't find very much great um, traditional German cuisine, I would say, but every other restaurant from every corner of the world you will find here um, and at very affordable prices. So um, that's the student feedback for Y Berlin. So uh, the overview, great scenery, both urban scenery and also uh, natural scenery around the city. Uh, I would say Berlin has a very chill vibe to it. Uh, everywhere you go, there's people out, out hanging out on the, on the streets and parks. Um, having a beer with friends on, on, the, on the sidewalks or in cafes, having a coffee, um, markets on the weekends. It's a really nice city to just relax in. It doesn't have this high intensity um, that you might find in other cities. History and monuments. Um, what, one thing that makes Berlin quite unique is that the history that's shaped it is a very recent history. Um, it, it's not drawing from its heritage from the age of exploration like uh, Lisbon or, or the, uh, um, 
or or more recent times like Paris. I know Paris also has very various stages to its history. Um, Berlin's history um, most recently is, is shaped by the Cold War and, and the um, post-Soviet period, which is still continuing to shape the development of the city. You know, you'll see the history developing in action through your experience here. So uh, next slide. So um, a bit of our location then. Um, we are located quite central in Berlin. If Berlin has a center, um, it's a very sprawling city, as I mentioned. Um, but uh, we're located right on the border between Kreuzberg, Treptow, and um, Neukölln, for those that know the city well. So what about the campus? Uh, in the campus, we've moved from um, this French university palace to a really cool co-working area called the factory. Uh, why? Because in the third year, we want you to have the opportunity to actually change again from a, being in this university environment now to preparing for the professional world and for what comes next. So within this co-working facility, you'll be surrounded from everything from large corporations to small startups, also with, uh, within other universities that are also in the, in the building. Uh, for example, we have um, Audi is, is a factory member, um, SoundCloud is a factory member, Siemens, McKinsey, uh, Code University of Applied Sciences, which has around 700 students learning um, in, uh, studying in tech areas, as well as the startup scene. Um, I believe prior to Corona, we had 19 or 20 percent of all startups in Berlin were founded by factory members. So it's a really incredible, vibrant uh, place to study and to network and uh, broaden your horizons for what comes next after year three. So here's some pictures of the campus. Um, that's from our induction week. Uh, Eduardo, if you don't mind just kind of clicking through them a few seconds at a time so we get to it. These are some of the co-working spaces. Um, there's a wide mixture, if you go to the next slide, of open co-working spaces, quiet study co-working spaces, uh, spaces that are for small group work, quiet um, private booths. Each floor has its kitchen, has a shared kitchen area um, with free coffee and sparkling water. There's a cafe and a canteen on the ground floor. The food in the canteen is excellent. Uh, it has vegan, vegetarian, uh, non-vegetarian options, always under 10 euros. Um, so uh, there's a cinema on the fifth floor and other event spaces as well. So, oh, I, should, <laughs> I shouldn't forget the playground. We have a ball pit, um, a nice place to unwind. There's also uh, ping pong tables and uh, uh, um, yeah, kicker tables as well. Um, so it's 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 a serious place to study, but also a lot of fun. And there's a lot of benefits to being part of the factory community. Um, but the key thing I would say is the events where you get to mix and mingle with um, other professionals and potentially find somebody that could be a future employer, or maybe somebody that's an alumni from a university that you're looking at for your master's degree. Um, so uh, interest of time, uh, let's move on to the next slide. I think I, I want to leave enough time for our um, Q&A afterwards. So uh, this is some of the team and some of the students uh, at the factory um, having a great time. <laughs> I would also, uh, before I go on student residences, um, about year three, uh, it not only do you broaden from working with uh, or meeting with other students, but also into the broader community uh, within the city. So. Um, we've actually decentralized the uh, student accommodation by third year. We have partnerships with multiple residences throughout the city. Um, so you can choose to be in a residence with maybe a few other forward students, but you'll actually have a chance to meet other students from other universities, actually other working professionals that live in these small single studio apartments. Um, all of the options are within 30 minutes of campus by, by bike or public transport. Um, here's a few examples of the different options um, that we have in the works for next year. So cost of living. Uh, Berlin is not as cheap as Lisbon, also not as expensive as Paris. It's a right in the middle, more or less. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so you can use that to kind of adjust for your, um, your budgets. So, and then the last slide, I think we have some pictures of some student life going on here. So we have birthday parties with cake. Uh, students went canoeing during their induction um, and uh, making use of the other great facilities here at the co-work. <laughs> and yes, the playground is great. Thanks, Johanna. Um, so I think that's the last bit. Um, should we go to the next slide? 
All right, so this takes us to the Q&A. We have Johanna here, um, a third year student. Um, you can ask Johanna any questions you have for her um, or, and also for each of us campus managers if it's a, um, something related 